I did it. I signed up to take the test to retake the NCLEX exam. Ah! So nervous! Oh! Uh. Hey guys, this is Howie. It's been a while. I know I've been studying and uh, well, I was studying for the NCLEX, but I didn't start studying until I found out that my ATT had been reassigned. So now I'm like, alright, I better get back to studying the way I was supposed to. I no longer have UWorld, I no longer have um, Simple Nursing. Thank you for mentioning that, Monica. I really do appreciate that um, everybody's suggestions. I, I, but I used UWorld the first time I took the NCLEX, and it gave me a false sense of confidence. And that was my own fault, not UWorld's fault. But um, yeah, so I got the ATT email and I went to go register for a time to take the test and I just didn't feel like I was ready. So I looked back on the resources that I had left and that was the Kaplan test. Um, actually the Kaplan whole study plan for nursing. And that involved a whole slew of content videos and then the rest were uh, the rest were videos explaining go-throughs and tutorials about how to go through each question. Now, I hated that Kaplan decision tree for the longest time because I felt like it was only catering to the exam and not for actual nursing. But it's finally driven through my head that despite the fact that I have nursing experience as an LVN, it's not what they're looking for for the NCLEX RN. And the NCLEX RM, their sole purpose is to make sure that the new graduate nurse RN is safe when they're hired and working on a unit. Unfortunately, I'm no longer going to be an LVN, I'm going to be an RN, so I needed to test that way. I didn't feel like that when I was working and going to school. I thought I knew it all, and I didn't respect the NCLEX RN exam, but now I do. So I did all the videos, uh, I went through the questions, and I finally decided to adopt the Kaplan decision tree. Now, many of the Kaplan decision tree, what it does is that it does not make you a better nurse, I found out, it does not make you a more critical thinking nurse. Well, it does in a way, but it, it doesn't, the critical thinking part has to come from you. I thought that Kaplan decision tree stopped that. But what the Kaplan decision tree did that I found useful as a new grad BSN with um, previous nursing experience is that it narrows down each question so that I don't have to overthink things. You know, like I don't have to think, oh, well, that'll never happen in the real world, or I would never, as a nurse, say that to anybody else or to a patient. You know, like, I would just say this, no, the Kaplan decision tree is going to hopefully help me decide to eliminate questions that the NCLEX RN um, computer doesn't want to see and doesn't want me answering. So it prohibits me from going way over the situation and just forces me to determine which answer is the most specific question that determines the greatest safety for the patient that I'm taking care of within an ideal nursing environment with no shortage of staff and no shortage of equipment or um, other uh, things that I would see in real life nursing. This is just for the NCLEX world, so hopefully that'll help me. And you know what, there's a secret. Um, when I first got the ATT exam, I applied to get an expedited uh, application review. So I put in my uh, DD-214 for military people. That's what we call the document that tells us that we have had honorable, honorable discharge after serving in the military. And so I got an email saying, hey, you didn't, uh, it doesn't say on, you didn't, you didn't give me a complete DD-214. It doesn't show whether or not you're an honorable discharge. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me go find that document for you, but it takes like a couple of weeks. Um, is there any way that I can prove to you other ways that I was discharged honorably? You know, like I can show you that I got my VA GI Bill 
um, you know, and, I, and that's only given to veterans and um, and uh, government ladies like, well, I approved your NCLEX, but I didn't expedite it because, you know, I don't have time, you know, like, or you didn't give the sufficient documents, and I thanked her profusely, and um, I appreciated that she approved my NCLEX, but I was kind of, you know, a little bit bothered that it wasn't expedited. Well, you know what? That didn't matter at all, because I got my ATT the next day after that lady emailed me, so obviously applying uh, for an expedited um, application review to get your ATT as a military personnel really doesn't matter, at least in California. Um, the other thing is that uh, I was actually approved to take the NCLEX uh, because I got my ATT a month ago. Remember my previous video where it says that crap I didn't pass the NCLEX, that as soon as I got my ATT, um, the first time around, I was worried about not getting any job prospects and letting it slip by, so I moved up the uh, NCLEX exam a week early, and I studied, and I studied, and I studied, I went, well, more like, specifically, I went through question after question after question after question, and I got about 60% of them right most of the time. And then I took the, the UWorld evaluation exam, and I said that was 70%, so I had a good chance of passing, but when I went to take the test, I was like, time, I felt actually, you know, like, I felt like the time was counting down, and I know you have like about six hours to do 265 questions max, but I thought that based on when I was going through question after question after question, I would actually do a little bit better, about 30% better, if I had not dwelled on a question for longer than like five minutes. So I attempted to do the NCLEX RN exam um, by going through each question and f and making a choice within one and a half minutes. And so I would actually secretly, I think it was because I was afraid of overthinking the exam because I didn't know how to eliminate the questions. Um, even if it was SATA questions or if it was uh, priority questions, I didn't know that I was supposed to use Maslow's scale of hierarchy. I knew on some level um, and some parts of my brain that I just had to find out which which intervention or assessment would make the patient the most safe but I didn't know how to do that systematically which is why I think that finally I'm going to adopt the NCLEX decision tree just for this exam. So um, I emailed my professor and uh, I've been keeping in contact with her, she's been very supportive. And there's been other professors that have been supportive too, even one that I had had arguments with when I was in her class. Um, I'm now taking her class as a nurse practitioner uh, student, which is what I've been doing. Um, I'm still working part-time as an LVN, but I've spent most of my time um, doing a lot of term papers for uh, the nurse practitioner student um, part of my program. So, but I still really, really, really want to get that uh, RN license exam so I can start working off my student loans. And also for my own um, self edification as well as my own confidence as, uh, as a nurse. Everybody knows that even if you're a nurse practitioner, you're still a nurse at heart. Um, not only emotionally, physically, spiritually, but also legally, at least in California, nurse practitioners still fall under the scope of practice of RNs. So, I need to be an RN on paper to be able to be confident enough to uh, pass the nurse practitioner exam. So, and plus, I need also need that experience, not as an LVM but as an RN, making decisions and delegating and time managing. Like it seems like I'm pretty comfortable with the anatomy, physiology, and scientific aspects of nursing. It's just the actual delegation part because as an LVN. I just did what I was told and I was so used to that, um, especially coming from a military background, I just needed you to tell me what to do and I'll go ahead and do it with whatever accuracy you need me to because I'll, I know what to do, just tell me what to do. But now as an RN, I am um, the liaison between the patient who's unstable, uh, the physician or nurse practitioner or PA that's... Um, not as available and can't be by the patient's bedside 24-7. Um, 
And plus, I'll be taking care of multiple patients as an RN, and I need to be able to delegate some stuff, some tasks that can't be that can be easily done, that doesn't involve assessment, that doesn't involve invasive procedures, um, to somebody else, you know? And then also, I need to be able to know what I say um, and go up the chain of command uh, rather than um, creating conflict that will waste time and also um, decrease my ability to safeguard the patient's safety. So, yeah, it was a, it was a completely different change. Um, even though I'm still called a nurse, it's a different uh, aspect of leadership and I still see um, I still love my LVNs and I would not be an RN or not even be in a nurse practitioner program had I not become a corpsman or an LVN first you know I have great respect for people who I work with and I would like to be the best leader and the most efficient person to be able to give uh, my future patients the best care possible so anyway back to the test I found out, I don't know why I did this, but I was like, oh, I want, I haven't seen any new grad programs, applica applications um, um, coming out lately, so I thought, well, maybe it's just because I'm not looking, so I'll go check out the website again. So I started looking at hospital websites, and lo and behold, the same ICU that um, decided to interview me first, um, but didn't hire me, has another opening. And I was embarrassed at first because um, I kind of botched that interview. I didn't answer all the questions. I kind of uh, talked about and delved into like you know different diatribes and anecdotes that weren't really um, were neither here nor there. And I got a low score, and I, they didn't hire me. Also because I didn't have my RN license. So um, and it's happening again. And so I plan to take the test on August the 8th, but I've moved it up to this coming Monday. Um, I moved it up really quickly, uh, two weeks earlier, because I realized that there's never going to be a good time. Never. Um, I'm never going to feel confident uh, to take the NCLEX again because I've been burned by it. Um, I wanted to wait until I was really ready and I was completely consistent, but um, you know, jobs are waiting. I'm burning through my savings and um, I have a lot of uh, term papers and schooling to do left for my nurse practitioner program. Life is going on top of life, it's going on top of life, it's going on top of life, and that's just the way life is. So I made a decision that I'm going to move up the test early, but this time I have a plan. I'm going to take, I emailed my professor and we talked about how I'm going to take the computer adaptive test uh, from both UWorld and Kaplan because I still have that UWorld 1 test for evaluation purposes to see how ready I am. I have those two tests. I'm going to take those tests a week before I'm going to take the real NCLEX exam. And I made a deal with my professor. If I score above 55-60% on both tests, I will continue on with the real test. If I don't, no hard feelings, it just shows that I didn't do my due diligence and I'm not ready for that test. I probably should let the application for the, um, for the ICU go and um, you know, wait until I'm ready, be more patient. And then maybe, um, you know, stall for a little bit, but uh, it's getting really hard guys, it's getting really hard. I. When people ask my experience, like for volunteer situations, um, I just tell them I'm a nurse, and then they say, oh, okay, well, what experience do you have? And I say, look, well, I have my BLS, I have my ACLS, and I have my BSN, and they're like, that's great! And, you know, but I don't specifically say that I have an RN license, and, um, I mean, I have no trouble because I've taken care of patients all my life, you know, in various different situations, so I can adapt really easily, but, I just feel like it's really part of me that's missing. It's a huge void that I don't have that license. So I really need to get that license. So anyway, thanks for listening to me. And I appreciate you guys' support. Um, I know I don't really post as many videos as I do, um, as I should have. But uh, I believe in, in the community that we're doing here on YouTube. And um, I hope that people who watch these videos who feel um, despondent and not want to 
do the NCLEX or they've done it like multiple times and they feel like nursing is, isn't for them or they're being screened out and uh, you know there's an audience for you. If you have the care, I, I wholeheartedly believe that if you care about other people and you really want to help them, keep trying to finish that test and uh, I feel like this is really my calling, you know, is to help others. I need to do, I need to pay my fees. Alright, so wish me luck. Thanks guys. See you later.